Hi guys, welcome to Learn PLC in a Day session and in today's session we are going to learn about Omron PLC. Now Omron we are using a model CPI CP1E. Okay, and this is this video is brought to you by NFI Learning Made Easy. And in this series of videos we are going to see how to wire the PLC, how to wire the Omron PLC. So we have a PLC right over here in the trainer. That's the PLC trainer for the Omron. That's the Omron PLC. And we have some I.O. box here for the inputs and for the outputs. So we are going to wire up this PLC to show you how to wire a real PLC, Omron PLC. Okay. So to begin with, I'm starting with the basic terminals, basic connections we do have in the Omron PLC. All right. So in the Omron PLC, you will see these are the inputs at the top. You can see common one, two, three, up to eleven. It has this has these number of inputs okay and that's the area where we put the battery now, battery is required suppose you have a last memory you have some information in the PLC some information which you are storing from long enough okay and and if your battery got weak you know battery is used to store that information so we need to replace that battery often so that your information is stored inside that okay so that is a space where you put the battery that is used to store your last memory information in the PLC that's the normal programming cable we use a USB cable which is often used in the printer cable it's similar to that as well it's a USB cable and these are the PLC processor status okay so just like you can see that this is right now power on PLC is running PLC run light is also on so PLC has been given the power and it's running so these are the status symbols here status indications here and these are the PLC outputs. PLC output wires are, you know, being wired up here. And then you have PLC I/O status. I/O status means input output status. This orange light indicates that this input is on right now, and this indicates that this is the output. So this output is on right now in the in this PLC. Okay. So these are different status. You have input, battery, programming cable, processor status, outputs, and PLC I/O status. Okay. So now we are going to program the PLC. Before that, we'll show you how to wire that. Okay, so this lesson is more of the wiring part. So let's see how to wire the PLC. So I'm showing you in this webcam format. All right. So now we have a PLC here. Now in this PLC, we have first terminal as common. Okay, this is common to all these inputs. These are the inputs: input one, input zero, one, and up to input seven. Okay. So how to wire this input? Now let's say the first task is. I want to detect the presence of the switch. If I press the switch, this should turn on my first input in the PLC. Okay. So let's see that how we can do that. So I'm going to use a couple of wires. So the first thing which you need to understand is the common. Okay. Now this is the common of my inputs. I'm going to connect here zero volt. This black wire I'm using for zero volt. So I have a power supply at the back. That's my power supply here, which has 24 and 0 volt terminals. So this 0 volt is connected to the common. Okay. Now the general idea is, if I connect 24 here, this input will be detected because we have to maintain a potential difference between your common and your input. That should be 24 volts. Potential difference between your common and your input. If you want to see a diagrammatic explanation, this is uh, some replica of the Solomon PLC. I have a common here. So to the common, I am connecting 0 volt. Okay. Now to whatever input I give 24 volt from the outside, this input will be on. Okay. So that's what I'm doing. So here in this input, first I'm going to directly connect 24 volt just to show you the status. So this 24 volt here, without using any switches, I just connect it here. So you will notice there is a small LED which is on here. If you can see the LED, there is an LED here. Or if I just make it closer. And you can see this LED is on because 24 is connected to input 0 and this is 0 so we are maintaining a potential reference so if I remove it this LED is off if I connect it to the second one 0 1 second LED is on so on third fourth this next one so whatever input you connect 24 volt it has uh, you know the potential difference fundamental if you maintain a potential difference between your common and your input which should be 24 because this is a DC input PLC this is written DC 24 volts input will be detected all right now if you do the vice versa now that's 24 volt I'm going to connect this 24 volt to the common okay now that's the zero volt wire if I connect this wire here again you have an LED which is on okay let's have a look at here again now this is 24 and that's 0 
So we have seen that, you know, either you can use a 0 volt or a 24 volt to the common. The other one should be connected to the input. If this is 24 volt here, if you connect 0 here, this input will be activated. Like here and here as well. Okay. So both ways will be working. So generally, what I'm going to do here is, I'm going to connect 24 to the common and 0 volt I'm giving to my input. So if you see this I.O. box, we have this first, this is a selector switch, NC switch, two NO switch, and this is an emergency, okay? So zero volt I'm connecting to my common of all the inputs. Now, this terminal is the common of all the inputs. What do I mean by that? In, in every input, we have two terminals, okay? One is the output, one is the input. So we have shorted each input to one terminal, okay? Now, these will be the outputs. So now I'm going to connect the output of this one or any of these inputs to my first input of PLC to get my switch detected in the PLC. That's what it, that's what we usually do. Okay. So now I, now my zero volt is connected to the common of my I/O box, and I'm going to connect the first input as this one. Okay. This goes to my zero zero here. First input. Okay. Now if I turn on this input, if I run the selector switch, you will find the indication here. This is on, okay, if you want to see. This is on because selector switch is on. If I turn off my selector switch, this is off now, okay. Now let's have one more switch connected to my PLC. Now this time let's connect an NC. So this NC from here will go to my zero 01, my second input. So you can see that this is already on because this is NC, so that's already passing the signal. So this is connected to my zero 01. So similarly, I can connect my other inputs to my next input of my PLC. So this goes to zero 02, and the next one goes to zero 03. Okay, we are just understanding how to wire the PLC. So we have four inputs connected, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, and 0, 3. That is my, the first one is a selector switch, second is an NC, another two are NO. So when I connect, when I press my NO switches from here, you can see the inputs are getting on. So this is on here, and this is on here. So that's how we can wire up the input, connecting the input I/O switches to the inputs of PLC. Okay. So to understand that in more clarification way, let me use some diagram. Okay. So what we have done is the first one we have connected a selector switch. So we are we are using three position out of which we are just using the one position because we don't have the other position in my trainer. So I'm going to use a power supply. So what we have done is, we have connected 24 volt in our trainer to the common. This is the common. And that's my first input. So let me just put it here, which is connected to 0 volt. And this is going to input 0. My second one is NC switch. So I'm going to take a switch from here. This is my NC switch. Put it like this. This goes to my input 0 1 and this is connected to 0 volt because I told you 0 volts common to all the buttons then we have two NO switches okay so let me put it like this it's like this NO switch and this goes to 0 as well this type of wiring is generally you'll find in all the PLC this 24 and 0 fundamentals is always uh, in a PLC okay now these, are, these are two NO switches this is NC and this is selector switch. So that's what we have done in our trainer. If you have any query, you can post me a question in that. This is an input wiring. We can do, we can connect this emergency as well. Okay, let's do that. I'm using a, using this wire to connect an emergency to 04. Okay, 04. I still have three inputs left. So I can connect, if I have a sensor or a limit switch, I can connect those inputs here. Okay, in this input, we have three inputs left, and five of them has been used. So that was about wiring the input. Now let's talk about wiring the output, which is again a very simple concept. 
okay so let me just put it aside all right now you have an output you have first is the common and then you have an output then you have another common another output now the common has been highlighted with the black terminal this red one is the output then another common another output two outputs then one more common and then you have two more outputs one more common and one more output now this concept of common is more like the concept of contact of a relay normally open contact this is actually the normally open contact of a relay okay so what happens when this output is on from the plc right now you can see that we have a dummy program in which your output is blinking okay in the plc now whatever you give to the common c0 this will come out from the out zero when the output is on from inside the plc that is what the fundamental is so if i give zero volts here and if the output is on here this will give me a zero volt okay if i give 24 volts here this will give me 24 volts if i give 10 volts or 5 volts whatever i give this will give me the output but you have to make sure the ampere rating of your outputs of the plc that should match with your ampere rating of your load okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to connect 24 volts to the common okay that goes to back of my plc that power supply now this 24 volts i'm going to connect to one of my indicator okay which is over here now in io section we have five indicators in which this is the common of all these indicator that is a zero volt and this is a 24 volt input that's a dc indicator okay so i'm going to connect output of my plc from here to one of the indicator over here right over here okay so this is getting 24 volts because my output is on and off on and off i have a dummy program so if you can see here this is blinking so out zero is blinking first output all right now what i have to do is i have to connect zero volt here to see the blinking happening okay so let me take another wire to connect zero volt to the common of our io box so that goes here so the moment I connect zero volt, I have my potential difference totally working. So this is getting 24 volt here. This is on because it is getting 24 volt here from the PLC, from the C0 because C0 is getting 24 volts and this 24 comes out of zero zero when the output is on. When the output is off, 24 doesn't come here. So it has 24 volt potential difference. If I connect this to here, this will blink or to here, this will also blink. Similarly here as well and here as well. So let it be here. So my first output zero zero is connected to my first indicator here. I'm just showing you the wiring. Now I'm doing the similar for the second one. So what we'll do is we have five indicators in our IO box. So we are going to connect five outputs here. So to have five outputs, first I'll do what I'll do is I'll just short my common. This is my common, this should be given 24 as well. So I'm going to short that with my common zero like this because I need 24 at all the commons. So that is the simplest and easy way to do that. Now I'm going to short another common which is C2 to the C1 because it also needs 24 volts. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four. I need to short C3 as well. Wait. Okay, we are done with that. So we have four outputs here to this one and to this one. This are going, these will be going to my indicator. So zero one will go to my second indicator, this red one, okay? This is not on because this is not even on in the PLC itself. But we'll be making some logics to turn on these outputs. And the screen indicator, this will go to zero two here, zero two. And the next one is zero three. This will go to my second last of these and then we have another one zero four that is going here all right i hope that makes sense a little complex looks like a little messed up but yeah it's an educational trainer so we cannot do anything about it so what we have done in nut in nutshell this 24 volt let me have it here as well all those is the same supply but just to clean the wiring this is connected to c0 to c1 and c2 okay then we took some indicators i can take an indicator from here i need more of these let me just have copy paste 
five. The first one is connected here. Oh, hold on. Let me just extend it. Yeah. First one is here. Second one is here. Third one is here. Fourth was here, and fifth was here. Okay. These were shorted and were given zero volt from one end to the common. Okay. So this was the wiring of my PLC, which is very easy. Just the concepts of 24 volt and zero. Here we have to maintain a potential difference, but here we will get the voltage which we apply to the common from the output when the output is on from inside the PLC. Okay. So this was uh, basics of wiring of PLC. Okay. So let's move ahead. Next is to understand the addressing. Now this Omron PLC CP1E, we have inputs, input elements being addressed by 0.0, .0 up to 0 0.7. So the first input will be addressed as 0, .0, .0. Okay. Then you have an output. Output is addressed as 100.00 up to 100.07. .00 these are the addressings of output. So we'll be doing that in the PLC programming. Then input memory, these are the internal relays, internal bits of a PLC addressed by W0.0 .0 .0 to W512.0. These are the bit bit addressing okay these are also the bit addressing then you have timers inbuilt timers ranging from t0 to t4095 similar as counters but in timers and counters we have a condition that we cannot take same addressing for timers and counters for example if you are using t00 already in your logic you cannot use counter c000 you have to use c001 or 2 or 3 but not the same that's the condition in the omron plc not in other plcs but we have a normal plc Data resistors are used to store the information. So we have 32,768 data resistor ranging from zero. Holding resistors are those which are latched, which will be on even the power is off. So when you regain the power, these will be latched. We will maintain its state. These are the holding resistors. So we'll be doing these resistors using that in our couple of logics. All right. So the next topic is PLC static input output check. We have to check the inputs what we have connected. We have already checked the inputs by pressing the switches. But we can also see that in in our PLC programming software as well. Okay, so let's do that in our PLC. So the PLC uh, programming software for Omron is CX Programmer. We are going to use this programming programming software for our PLC. So first we'll go to the new. When you are new, when you open the software, press on new. Okay, then it will ask you the device type. So this is generally mentioned in your PLC. Mine is CP1E. So I'm going to select that. Then go to settings. Because in this one, you also have different types of CPU. So mine is N14, select yours if you're using any other, press OK. And the network type is how you're connecting your PLC. So these are the different wires. So we are using USB, simple USB. So just select your USB, okay. That is a wire which you can see here. That is a USB wire connected to my computer. Okay, then press OK. Then you'll be given a screen. Now in the screen, what you have to do is for input output checking, first go to online. Okay, go to online, press yes. Then if your communication is perfect, you'll be given online. Then go to tools, switch box utility. Okay, take this box here. Now this is the monitoring. If I put here 0, 0.0, this is the status of my input. Okay, then you have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, oops, not 9, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. So now you can see that with respect to this programming window. Okay. Now my first input is a selector switch, which is right now off. If I turn it on, you can see the status here. This is on. Status is on the PLC as well, but in the software we generally see because sometimes it's very difficult to locate the PLC if it is in the panel or the machine. So you can open your software and see the status here. So zero zero is on because the selector switch is on. This is called static input checking. Now second is the NC. This is an NC. That's why this zero dot zero one is on. If I press this one, this is off in the software. This is the NO. So you can have. If I press this one, zero dot zero two is on. And this is the 0 0.03. If I press this one, this is on. The 4 is my emergency. So if I press this one, 0 0.04 is off. Otherwise, oh, this is on. Okay. Now the status of output. Now in the here, you can write 100.00. 0 .00. 
Now this is the status of your output. So if this is blinking, when this is on, you see the status on. When this is off, you see the status here is off. So that's giving me the status of first output. Now this is the status of second output, which is off. All the other outputs are off. Two, three, and you have similarly for all the other outputs are off. Okay. So if this is on, you can see the status here. So this is monitoring switch box utility in which you can see your inputs and outputs. Okay. So this was the static input output check to understand the wiring principles and proper working of inputs and outputs. Okay. Now let's see the different status screens of PLC. Okay, status screen. So what we have this is to determine the PLC processor status. Processor, okay, just mind that. Now here you'll see that we have two screens, PLC run which shows that PLC is running. When PLC is running, its logic is being solved. That means PLC is running. There's no problem with that. When you have any, when you stop the PLC or when you put that in the programming mode, programming mode is like, you know, sometime you'll find this as a program or somewhere you'll find a stop. Both are the same thing. When you want to program your PLC, you put that in the stop mode or in the program mode in which the logic will not be solved. It will not be running. So right now, if you see the current status of this PLC, here it's power on and it's running okay this is running here so how to stop this PLC so you open this software and you'll find here PLC monitor mode PLC program mode now if I press this program mode and I press yes here now my programming is not being solved so you can see that this is off and there is no blinking going on okay there's no blinking and this is not running so if I put it into run mode again by the software here is the run mode click on that click yes now you will see this is running and your blinking starts so this is just to start and stop the PLC logic by your software programming mode and the run mode okay now the next is how to download and upload the program okay so right now you have a program already inside you want to read that so you will go to PLC transfer to PLC means transfer the logic from your software to the PLC from means from PLC to your system so right now we are uploading that we want a, the program which is already inside so we'll click on from PLC then click OK press OK again so it will upload press OK so this is the logic which is running inside this is the output Q100.00 which is getting on and off Okay, so don't get confused by the logic which will be doing that. So this is just I'm showing how to get the logic from the PLC. Okay, if I have to submit the logic, so let's do a small logic change. So instead of 100, I'm going to enter 100.01. I just change the address. Okay, now I want to download this. So what I have to do is step one is go to online, click online, click yes, then go to the PLC transfer two PLC this time press OK and yes again and yes again so what I have done is I have just changed the output now you will see here my in my IO box second output is blinking and if you see here second output is blinking here as well so that's how you change the logic and you download it in your PLC it's very easy just need a USB cable and the software okay so this was about PLC status screen and uploading and downloading the program. In the next lessons, we'll be doing some exercises about basic exercise on series and parallel latching interlocking timers and counters to understand how to program this home run PLCs. So thank you so much. If any you have any questions, just put a comment below this video. I'll get back to you. Thank you.